Okay, welcome everybody to today's webinar. We'll be going through the 2021 California Farm to School Incubator Grant Program. My name is Nick Anisich. I'm the Farm to School Program Manager with the California Department of Food and Agriculture in the Office of Farm to Fork. And also presenting today is Amy Garfinkel, our new Farm to School Network Lead. Uh, we're so excited to see all these friendly faces and to be sharing all the hard work that's gone into this grant program. Thank you, Rachel and Michael, for both helping set up today's session, for joining our EDFA Farm to School team. We're really excited about this opportunity and um, can't wait to share it with you. All right, next slide, please. So for today's webinar, we're gonna go through these one, two, three, four, five sections. The first one is an overview of the California Farm to School Innovation Grant, which is track one. Then we're gonna go over track two, the California Farm to School Regional Partnerships Grant. We'll go through how to apply online using our online grant application portal. We'll go through any timeline questions that people have. And then lastly, we'll do a Q&A. So if you're watching the recording of this, um, we were able to, uh, any questions that came in yesterday or before, we'll be able to start with those during the Q&A. Uh, and then we will, we will be publishing all the Q&A from this session, as well as any questions that we receive via email. We publish those every week on Thursday. So if you want up-to-date information, if you're looking for more details about the grant, you can check our website. Every week on Thursday, we'll be posting the new uh, rounds of Q&A. And we get, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 questions a week. So there'll be a lot of information for you uh, available on our website after this webinar. All right, next slide. So first and foremost, we're gonna set an intention for today. I wanted to talk through uh, why this program was created, how it was designed, and then we wanted to honor all the work that's happening first. So really quickly, the Farm to School Incubator Grant Program was created to expand food access, increase market opportunity for California farmers, and to connect classrooms, cafeterias, and communities. So if you're thinking of uh, what are the three main goals of this program? Expanding food access, increasing market opportunity, and connecting classrooms, cafeterias, and communities. Please, 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 you know, as you're filling out your grant application, as you are writing in your project description and all of those details that go into a grant, remember that these are the three aims of this program. We'll also go into the scorecard into a little bit more detail, but know that these are the three things we're trying to achieve. In order to design this program, we, we kept these things in mind. We wanted it to be simple, accessible, and to maximize impact. So if you're asking questions or wondering about why things are set up the way they are, it's because we wanted to keep it as easy as possible to apply. We wanted to make it accessible to all via simple online application. We wanna maximize the impact of our program. Uh, as part of the design, we talked to stakeholders throughout the state and leveraged our partnerships in the California Farm to School Network and the public comment period uh, where people could submit questions and notes on the grant was from November 23rd to de December 4th. We received a great number of comments, really thoughtful notes from people. So thank you for helping us design this program. I kept telling them, this is our last chance to make edits. So please, please, please submit your notes and we got a great number of really thoughtful comments, so thank you. And lastly, we wanted to honor the work of food producers and school nutrition teams throughout the state. We know that this is a crazy time. We know that things are really unprecedented, especially after yesterday's activities, and that there's a lot of things happening around us. Farm to School is not mandated in the school nutrition programs, so this is so often a heart and soul program where people are pouring in their passion into this work. We honor that and recognize that and are so grateful for your time. We hope that this pilot program and this pilot funding will help amplify the work that you're already doing even more, give you more opportunity to uh, work and live in your passion and make a difference. All right, next slide, please. So track one, we're gonna talk now about the California Farm to School Innovation Grant. Next slide. So the California Farm to School Innovation Grant will fund local education agencies, LEAs, to establish new or expand existing integrated farm to school programs. These programs will one, procure new California grown, um, I gotta move our faces, or produced whole or minimally processed foods and integrate these foods into school meals. And two, 
coordinate educational opportunities between cafeterias, classrooms, and communities. I'm gonna point you here to the words in bold. Who is eligible to apply? LEAs. Why are they applying? To integrate farm to school programs so that they can procure more California grown foods and bridge the gap between cafeterias, classrooms, and communities. So it's LEAs meant to integrate programming. There's money for procurement and there's money for coordination. So again, as you're going through your application, keep these things uh, you know, top of mind. All right, next slide. So track one, we're starting with, with the review criteria. It's almost like our thesis statement that we'll be going back to uh, in an essay. So if we look on the far left, you'll see each scoring category. The first scoring category is identified community need. If you go on the far right, this is half of the, um, half of the point total is focused on identified community need. The scoring description will focus on the economic factors, community diversity and other factors that you can use to make the case for your school, for your LEA to show that you are deserving of this funding. Our goals, remember, are to expand food access. So this is why there's such a huge focus on need. We also acknowledge that free and reduced price meals are not the only way to identify community need, especially during COVID-19 and all that's happened. So there's space throughout the application for you to fill in the gaps and go beyond the story that free and reduced price meals tells. So please focus on that identified community need. The second scoring category is evidence of strong effective partnerships and if applicable, a history of farm to school success. We know that you can't have successful farm to school programs if you are doing it alone. So we hope that you have strong effective partnerships in your LEA uh, and, and in your school nutrition department, your education team that can show that you'll be able to leverage this funding to continue to grow your impact. One way to show evidence of a strong effective partnership, of course, is to have a history of farm to school success. So if you have uh, already a, received a USDA farm to school grant, or been running farm to school programs through your CTE funding or whatever it is, please include that and let us know. We hope to be able to highlight uh, those success stories as well. The third component in the scoring category is a comprehensive plan. So we wanna make sure that you've uh, dotted your I's and crossed your T's. So comprehensive planning where um, you let us know what you're gonna do with the funds and what you're gonna do in your program. We'll go through that a little bit more later. The last two components on here are project diversity and project sustainability. Regarding project diversity, we wanna show with this pilot program that Farm to School can work for small schools or for small LEAs, medium-sized LEAs and large LEAs. We wanna show that it can work in urban, rural and suburban settings. So we wanna make sure that uh, as we look at all of the applications that come in, that we are spreading out the funding to deserving uh, grantees throughout the state. And on project sustainability, we want to see how this program can be sustained beyond the duration of the grant program. We understand that that's challenging, but we know that there are creative solutions there, whether it's by partnering with the education fund to get money in the LCAP budget, whether it's by drawing down on CTE or a number of other, um, a number of other opportunities. There's one piece in here that I wanna go back to under evidence of strong effective partnerships, and that is established or committed partnerships within the LEA. We really value LEAs that have adopted farm to school wholeheartedly, where there's buy-in from the top, whether it's a student farm run by FFA that's gonna be selling produce to the cafeteria um, or a culinary program doing recipe development. Those are really strong evidences of committed partnerships in addition to longer term relationships with outside partners. So please look within your LEA as well as external to your LEA to show your uh, history of partners. All right, next slide, please. So who can apply for this? We talked about LEAs within California that operate national school lunch programs. This is the definition of LEA, a public board of education or other public authority legally constituted within a state for either administrative control or direction of or to perform a service function for public elementary schools or secondary schools in the city, county, township, school district, or other political subdivision of a state, or for a combination of school districts or counties that is recognized in a state as an administrative agency for its public elementary schools or secondary schools. 
that's a lot of words that tell you that an LEA is like a school district or a county board of it. So there's flexibility in there, of course, but if you have questions about what is an LEA, please email us and we can help you. All right, next slide. So in for track one, there's a unique funding formula. This was developed by looking at different national and state level farm to school funding opportunities. Here's the funding formula for track one. There's two options, whether you're a small LEA or a large LEA. So small LEAs, which are 5,000 students or fewer, they take the number of national school lunch program meals served in the 18-19 school year and multiply it by 12 cents. And that gives them a total number. If that number is under $20,000, then you just apply for the minimum amount, which would be a $20,000 reward. If that number is over $20,000, then that's your unique funding limit. So let's say it comes out to $35,320. Well, then that's how much you can put in your budget for later in the application. The reason why the minimum award is $20,000 and why small LEAs have a different funding limit than the larger ones is because California has such diverse school districts and LEAs, where we might have 288 students enrolled in one place and 700,000 in another. So we wanted to make sure that there's equitable distribution and opportunity to make a difference with impact for your program. Larger LEAs, which is 5,000 students or more, they take the number of national school lunch program meals served in 18, 19 school year and multiply it by eight cents per meal. And again, the minimum award is still 20,000, so if it comes out to less than 20K, bump up your budget to 20K. And the maximum award, if you're at the top end, is $500,000. These award amounts are supposed to give ample funding for transformation and impact. All right, next slide. So I'm gonna go through now how the application works. Each of these little green boxes is what's on the online application. So first is the project summary. It's 250 words. If you look in the top right of this slide, you'll see be concise, bullet points encouraged. You do not have to use all 250 words. If you can sum it up in one sentence, please do that. Know that we expect to get 350 applications-ish. So that's a lot of reading for our scorers. The more clear and concise that you can be with your project summary and in responding to these and in responding thoroughly to these um, prompts, you know, the more helpful it will be for our scores, the more focused your project will be in the long term. So project summary, 250 words. Tell us what you're going to do. Tell us how it's going to impact us. Need for the project, another 250 words. Make the case for your community. Make the case for your LEA. You can refer to the scorecard again to look at um, how things will be scored in the end, but know that there's the opportunity here to go beyond free and reduced price meals alone. So you can look at unemployment numbers, you can look at the Cal Enviro screen uh, to see how environmental uh, issues impact your community. There's a lot of options and things that you're able to bring to the table in that section. Then lastly, you will complete the funding formula in the application and let us know how much you're eligible to receive. Next slide, please. Next in the application, you'll provide LEA data from the 18-19 school year. All of this LEA data is available on ed-data.org. So that's where we got these components from. And also every school district or LEA keeps this data on file. So we didn't ask for like these really uh, hidden unique elements. It's basic information that everybody has. There's also an optional question for you to share how has COVID-19 impacted your school, your school community. So let us know in that section. Again, know that community need is 50% of the score. The next component of the application is to submit school nutrition data from the 18-19 school year. You'll talk about the different programs that, this, that the LEA offers, and then talk about how your school acts as a nutrition hub for the community. We know schools can do more than just serve lunch and breakfast and supper. We know that they can also partner with food banks to do food distributions. We know that there's a million other solutions out there that get families engaged and increase food access. It's not a judgment thing where we're thinking, oh, that, that LEA could have done more. It's more for us to better understand how you are serving that community need already. So that if you are a grantee, we can see how much you grow. The farm to school history and programming component is next. 
there are 1,000 words for this section. If you are an LEA who has a new farm to school program, don't worry about it. You don't have to fill this out. Uh, if you have a program already, please let us know what you've been doing. You could share a timeline with us. You can share successes as well as obstacles. This is for us to just see what the journey has been and what your impact has been so far. For us in the application, we need to see what the baseline is so that we can measure growth afterwards. All right, next slide, please. So track one application, this is the biggest chunk of it. It's the project narrative. This is 1000 words for you to share your goals, activities, and who's gonna be in those roles accomplishing what. Again, be concise, bullet points are encouraged. So if you wanna bullet out the timeline and put your goals in it that way, you wanna put each person's role in there and then bullet out what they're gonna be um, doing, that's totally valid. Do it whatever way you can most effectively communicate your, um, communicate your goal and mission. There will also be a section for you to put in the timeline of the project, a simple evaluation plan that will, you get to decide how you're gonna evaluate it, but it's basically how will you know you've made the impact that you wanted to make? And then that last question is project sustainability. So how will you be able to continue this program in the long term? Will it be something that once you've sourced these additional local products, now you can continue sourcing them in a harvest of the month capacity? Or now that you've identified these new local products that you can procure, you're gonna grow them uh, simultaneously in your school gardens and partner it with your uh, STEAM classes out in the garden. There's a bunch of opportunities here uh, for you to let us know how you'll sustain this project in the long term. Okay, next slide. In the track one application, there's also sections on farm to school partners and commitments, budget and COVID-19 adaptations. For farm to school partners and commitments, there's 250 words for you to share who the partners are, who you'll be working with, whether they're internal to the LEA or external to the LEA. And there are three mandated letters that you'll be able to request and submit in the online portal. The first letter is a letter of commitment from the LEA superintendent or leader sharing that they are committed to this project. So often farm to school projects have buy-in at the ground level, but there might not be a top-down initiative. And we hope that with this letter of commitment, you'll be able to show that the whole LEA uh, shares and believes in the need, in the requirement or responsibility to meet the need of the community that you've identified. You'll also need two letters of support from internal or external partners. So whoever you're listing in that roles section in the project narrative, you should make sure that there are letters of support from those people. So if you are going to be partnering with your FFA school district farm in order to procure local food and get kids engaged in the cafeteria, then you should provide a letter from that educator sharing that they are into this and ready to, ready to dive into the work with the funding. You can submit additional letters if you have more support. Know that one of the other scoring components is evidence of uh, partnerships. So a great way to showcase that is through these letters of support and commitment. The next piece is the budget. There are no matching funds required for this grant. So you can go through the allowable costs, which are staff time, food reimbursement, travel, educational integration, and the, the ones uh, after that. And you can go through the budget using those categories and letting us know how you'll spend the funds. The last thing is COVID-19 adaptations, 250 words. How has COVID-19 impacted your school meal service? Have you had to shift to grab and go? Have you had to shut things down? Just let us know what's happening. It's not scored, but there's rare opportunity for us to gather this information and hear about what's happening on the ground. So please, 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 if you're able to, let us know how your uh, LEA has responded. All right, next slide. Another large component of this track one application is the California procurement baseline. This is an opportunity for the school nutrition department to share how their uh, school nutrition program is operating and if they're buying any local foods already. This grant program is meant to fund the procurement of new local food items, local being California grown. So we need to know what you're already buying from California in order to see what you're eligible to purchase uh, with these grant funds. So as part of the procurement baseline, 
you'll first share your approximate total food cost, and then go through the California grown or produced foods that you already get, excluding fluid milk. So it asks, did you buy any? Where'd you serve them? About how much did you spend on them? And then the purchasing method, how you bought it, and then who you bought it from. We ask in the application, what is, is this something you're tracking? And it's yes, it's yes or no. So if you're not tracking it, that's okay. Please just put in the most up-to-date relevant information that you have. It doesn't have to be um, a perfectly uh, tracked thing. We understand that there's other, uh, other things weighing on you, other things that you have to accomplish. So please you know, use that information. The reason why the 1819 school year is our baseline year is because when COVID-19 happened in the 1920 year, other things might have changed. Uh, the fourth uh, component of this baseline is to upload any other spreadsheets or information you have regarding your procurement. So if you wanted to up include information from the 1819 school year and more recent information, or if you have a complete list of everything that you've been getting from California because you've been tracking that already, or everything you're getting locally because you've been tracking that already, please share it with us. That additional information will help us establish that baseline. Okay, next slide, please. Here are the unique elements of track one. We wanted to make sure that these pieces were highlighted in this webinar because we were receiving a few questions about them. So first, at least 30% of the total grant award must be used for educational integration. So that means of the, if you got a minimum award, so if you receive $20,000, at least 30% of that award could be used on your farm to school coordinator or building school garden beds or all that kind of thing. So connecting the cafeteria and the classroom, at least 30% of the funds must be used for that. If you are an LEA who already procures a lot of local food, let's say you feel like I'm already working with so many farmers. I like what we're getting already. I'm not worried about expanding it but we could use these funds to get some new products, but also to really balance out uh, the cafeteria and classroom connection to get more emphasis on the classroom piece, then you could go 50-50 on the funding and use half the money for procurement and half the money for, um, for educational integration. There's flexibility that we are allowing on that front. That was something we heard in the public comment phase that we should do and we made that adjustment. The next piece is that up to 70% of the total grant award can be used for procurement of new and whole or minimally processed California grown or produced foods. So that means up to 70%. You can't go beyond 70, uh, but you can go anywhere between that 70-30 split. In that next big box over there, you can see that up to 10% of total grant award can be used for labor costs associated with processing and procuring new California grown or produced foods. So if you need somebody to spend some time on the phone or, spend, or go to the farmer's market and talk to the producers and see if they're able to sell to your school, you can uh, build that into your budget. You can also build in time if you're getting new whole or minimally processed foods that you haven't gotten before and you need to chop them. You know, you can write that labor cost in there too. Up to 10% of the total grant award can be used for kitchen infrastructure to support the use of these new, newly procured foods in school nutrition programs. So let's say you need a new walk-in in order to store all of that new fresh lettuce that you're getting locally. So you can build up to 10% of the award into there. If you want to use more than 10% of the award on infrastructure, there's a section in the application for you to make the case for that. If you're trying to increase the amount of food that you can procure locally, if you're trying to increase the market access for local producers, those are in line with the goals of the program. So please submit that in your application. So we allowed flexibility on that 70-30 split between procurement and education. We also allowed additional flexibility on infrastructure. So those were things that came out of that public comment period that we were really happy to include. Thank you for everyone who submitted notes on that. Okay, next slide. Reporting and invoicing is the last component of track one. The first thing is that there will be monthly invoices we're submitting, we're having the grantees submit monthly invoices because we want to reimburse you for what you've already spent. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we wouldn't do it as regularly, but we want to make sure that the reimbursements are happening. So project costs to be reimbursed can be submitted monthly. It's a 45-day reimbursement process for us to go through our fiscal system. And there will be, um, we'll submit a template 
that you just fill out the template uh, with what you bought, who you bought it from, that kind of thing, and, um, and you submit it to us. It's a really easy, should be a cut and paste thing in a spreadsheet. Next, there will be quarterly reports. These will be forms that you submit online through our online grants portal system. You'll just share project progress, challenges, and successes. How are things going? Where can we help? That's really the point of this, is to hear how we can help. We have capacity to support grantees. So please, please, please think of us as partners in that. Lastly, we're requesting annual data. So we're requesting it for the duration of the grant and the following year. We'll be getting those monthly invoices, so we'll have that stuff to build into an annual data collection. We'll have the monthly invoices and quarterly reports. So that can go towards it. But then we're also asking you to share about how your procurement practices have evolved over time. In addition, we are requesting that the grantees the year after the grant program also submit the data. So if you could continue filling out that template for the year after the grant, that way we can see if the project sustained. This is pilot funding. So we wanna make sure that we are making the, we are making the impact we hope to achieve. The only way to know if the project sustained beyond the duration of the grant is to ask. So that's all we're doing there. Then lastly, there's a final interview. So instead of having a really long final report that you'll have to submit, we're just gonna get on Zoom together and have a conversation about how this worked. How'd it go for you? What can we improve in the future? What additional supports or additional focus areas could we, uh, could we include in future funding if it, if it arrives? So for that final interview, it really is a back and forth for us to grow and to hear how things went, for us to analyze how your project went as well. Okay, next slide. Okay, last thing for track one. Oh my gosh. Whew, last thing, <laughs> things to remember. The review criteria, as you are going through the application, think back to the review criteria. Are you speaking and sharing about your identified community need? Are you showing evidence of strong, effective partnerships? Have you submitted a comprehensive plan? And then how will you sustain it throughout, throughout the, the term of the grant and beyond? In your application, remember to be clear and concise. Just because there's a thousand words doesn't mean you have to write a thousand words. Make sure you're using the space to speak clearly about your project and as concise as possible. Lastly, remember the letters of commitment and support and remember to give yourself time to get those submitted and signed in return. Those are gonna tie in directly to evidence of strong effective partnerships. So please, please, please remember the idea um, to build that in. So the review criteria focuses mostly on identified community need and evidence of strong effective partnerships. So know that that's there. And then lastly, if you have questions about this grant track, if you are filling out the application and need help, we are here for you. So you can email cafarm2fork at cdfa.ca.gov and we are here to support you. Remember in this design, we wanted to keep it simple, accessible and impactful. So know that that is our goal. Okay, next slide. Track two, California Farm to School Regional Partnerships Grant. This will be a very, uh, it's, it's shorter. I'll tell you that about track two. <laughs> so track two, the purpose of track two, the California Farm to School Regional Partnerships Grant, to fund farm to school partnerships to expand existing farm to school initiatives and increase collaboration and coordination between producers and the schools they serve. We hope to, prov to provide funding for infrastructure, transportation, coordination, and planning. In this grant track, we want you to tell us what puzzle pieces of the food system you have and what puzzle pieces of the food system you need in order to expand your farm to school impact. All right, next slide. Again, deeper on purpose, we hope these programs will increase procurement of California produced foods, increase sustainability, so it provide the funding to create real relationships, increase student engagement, and increase collaboration between partners. So we're looking for projects that connect procurement and student engagement and collaboration. So that means that it's not just procurement alone that we're looking at in this track. Yes, that's a component of it. So if you're a producer on here and you've worked with an LEA before to, to sell produce to them, know that we're also looking for that student engagement component. Okay, next slide. 
here's the re review criteria. It will look familiar to you. <laughs> it's the same as before. So remember, identified community need is first and foremost. Tell us about your community. Tell us about why you need these funds. Next, show evidence of strong, effective partnerships and a history of farm to school success. Because we wanna expand existing programs, we'll need you to complete that section and to submit the letters of commitment showing what you guys have accomplished together in the past. Of course, you'll need a comprehensive plan that shows who's gonna do what and on what timeline and how much it will cost. And then we're still looking at project diversity and sustainability. Some projects will be more sustainable than others. For example, if you want a walk-in cooler that's gonna allow you to buy more fresh produce and keep it longer and use it more, well, then that might be a really sustainable purchase and a really great use of grant funds. Just one example. All right, next slide. So who can apply? This application is a combination. So we need at least two LEAs within California that operate the National School Lunch Program and at least one regional farm to school partner. The reason why it's two LEAs and at least two LEAs and at least one regional partner is because we wanted to make sure that we could stitch together some of these projects that have had so much success individually. Procurement is often done in teams and we know that there might be a producer who sells to multiple LEAs and this might be the exact funding they need to scale up their production to meet the increased need of an LEA. Okay, next slide. So this explains who is a regional farm to school partner. There's food producers, and yes, I am gonna read all of them. Food producers, producer networks or associations, farmer or rancher cooperatives, majority controlled producer-based business ventures, food councils, local or tribal governments, nonprofit corporations, economic development corporations, public benefit corporations, Community supported agriculture networks or associations, also known as CSA networks or associations, regional farmers market associations, county agencies or regional authorities, philanthropic organizations, institutions of higher education, commercial federal or farm credit system lending institutions. So there's a lot of flexibility here on your regional farm to school uh, partners list. So work with these partners, include them in your applications, and make sure you have letters of support from them. All right, next slide. So here's the application process for track two. Start with the project summary and then share the total amount that you're requesting. This one is flexible based on the need. So it's between $10,000 and $250,000. On the $10,000 side, you might be able to get a new cool bought refrigerated trailer that you can take to deliver your produce. Like boom, there you go, great solution. Uh, for larger scale projects, it's up to $250,000. So you can, you can break that out however you need. Project partners, like we said before, two LEAs and one regional partner. You can go bigger than that. You can have 10 LEAs and 10 regional partners if that's what you want to do, but make sure that you're using the funds most effectively for program impact. Any of these applicants can be the lead, any of these partners can be the lead applicant on the application. So it's basically whoever has the bandwidth to fill out the paperwork or fill out the online portal, let that person take the lead and then they can send requests for others for information to fill out the remainders. Letters of commitment are required from all project partners except for the lead applicant who's filling out the thing themselves. So um, make sure that you have those letters of commitment from everyone. All right, next slide. You'll also need to include LEA data for every every partner who's included on that side, just like before, we're trying to figure out and establish community need. So you can share which community you'll be serving and how has COVID-19 impacted your school community. You'll also need to include farm to school history and programming, a thousand, up to a thousand words sharing the impact, successes, and challenges of farm to school efforts in your community. We've seen so many great programs throughout the state that have important stories to share. We would love to hear those stories and then hear how you can use this funding to increase your impact. All right, next slide. Final is, or the next component is the project narrative. Again, it's a thousand words. Share your goals, your activities, the roles of the people who will be involved in the project. We give you a thousand words so that you have the space you need. But remember, be concise and use bullet points if that's how you want to communicate it. 
There's also a timeline portion, a simple evaluation plan that asks the question, how do you know you will, you will have achieved the impact that you hope to achieve? And then project sustainability, how will this funding, this, uh, this project sustain beyond the duration of the grant? If it's an infrastructure purchase, we of course assume that there will be maintenance costs, so you might wanna include how will those uh, things be maintained, uh, but you can tell the story there of your project. All right, next slide. Again, on the budget, there are no matching funds required, and some of these categories include infrastructure, transportation, project coordination, and facilitation, and uh, planning, and then travel. We know that sometimes people need to go to the farm site to see what it looks like to meet with a producer and hear, hear how that project's going, or go to the university where you can uh, learn about the most up-to-date research on their uh, farm laboratory. All those things can be included in this application as long as it's directly related to the project. Infrastructure, transportation, project coordination and facilitation, planning and travel. Incorporate those things as needed into the budget to let us know how you'll be spending the funds in each category. And then additional information, this part is optional, but again, we're giving you the space to make the case. 250 words are available to tell the story of community needs, gaps and challenges and 250 words are included for you to talk about any additional resources, partnerships, or commitments you'd like to share. So for example, if your LEA has already invested a bunch of new bond money into building new school kitchens, and this program will fill out this local procurement piece of that, uh, that investment that's already in place, please put that in here. If there's a nonprofit partner that you have or a philanthropic organization that is gonna um, provide additional funds to the project, let us know, even if they're not directly related, um, like if they're not part of the project, if they're not playing a role in your project narrative, but it's funding that you're using for a separate piece of your program, please include that. It will show that you have strong, effective partnerships. Okay, next slide. So in track two, we are able to provide advanced payments. We know that this is a challenge, especially for infrastructure purchases that it can be a difficult thing to find the capital upfront to buy the, to make that investment. So track two recipients may be eligible to receive advance payment for project costs. It's a pretty complex process. So we want you to look at page three of the RFA to look at details for that. The budget section of the application asks you, will you be requiring advance payment? Yes or no? If it's yes, then that means for us on the back end that we can start that process for you as an applicant. It just lets us know what your needs are up front instead of afterwards, we won't be prepared to handle the paperwork. So this will make us ready to roll as soon as the selection period is done. Okay, next slide. Here's the reporting requirements for track two, the Regional Farm to School Partnership track. There'll be regular invoices. These um, will be monthly or quarterly. This is based on your budget. Some people might just be doing a few large scale infrastructure purchases right up front. So in that case, you would wanna get that reimbursed monthly. If you are spending this money more regularly, you might wanna do it quarterly. We're allowing that flexibility for grantees to decide. In those uh, invoices, so this detail your spending, provide documentation of your spending. If you're doing advanced payment, you'll have to ensure that your purchases comply with the advanced payment regulations, which are detailed on that page three. And if you're selected as a grantee, of course, we'll be going through those with you in detail. There will also be quarterly reporting, similar to track one, where you'll go through the forms, uh, go through an online form to share your progress, challenges, and successes. Again, it's for us to be partners on this work together. How can we help you with our staff time, with our capacity, with our ability to reach producers throughout the state? And then lastly, in the final interview, we will talk through how has this program gone? Did you make the impact you wanted to make? Again, instead of a report, it will be an interview. Okay, next slide. All right, things to remember for track two, the review criteria is always the most important thing when you're writing and filling out your application. Look back to the scorecard so that you can make it clear to the people reading it that your project checks all the boxes. So it meets a, an identified community need, that you have evidence of strong effective partnerships, 
that there is a comprehensive plan detailed on what you'll do with the funds and on what timeline that your project uh, you know, represents a certain portion of the state's diverse, diverse set of LEAs and that uh, the project will be sustainable. Remember in the application, be clear and concise. And for track two, remember that you need letters of commitment for, from all partners. So again, give yourself time to request those and get them submitted. You can do it through our web system called WiseHunt. And lastly, if you have questions, we are here to help. We are not here judging you as you ask us questions. We encourage questions. We hope to see more of them. We hope to answer them. Every week on Thursday, any questions we receive via email will uh, be posted on our website. So we'll answer you directly as soon as we can, as soon as we get the email. And then because we don't wanna give anybody a competitive advantage, we post that, inter that interaction and exchange uh, on our website so that if other people might have a similar question, they should scroll through that section on our website um, before they ask it, or they can ask it and scroll through. Okay, next slide. Oh my gosh, I did it. I made it through that, all that talking. Thank you all for uh, listening. I saw some of the comments, we'll be going through those. I'm gonna hand it over now to Amy Garfinkel, our new Farm to School Network lead. Amy's gonna talk you through how to use our online grant application portal. We know technology can be stressful. So she's here to talk you through uh, how that works and then our timeline. Take it away, Amy. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Nick. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. So in order to apply, you're going to use an online grant application portal. The reason why we chose an online portal is that it will help keep all your application materials in one place. It was designed to be simple to use and accessible to the user. You can save as you go. And then also, once grants have been awarded, all reporting will be done through the portal. And so it will help us track impact of the grant. The portal is through the WiseHive system. On page eight of the RFA, you can find a link to the application portal for track one and a separate link to the application portal for track two. When you click on those links, you'll see a screen like the one on the left-hand side right now. You just scroll down to the bottom, click sign up, and then you can create an account and it will prompt you to create a profile as well. Once you've created those, if you decide to apply to the other track as well, you can use that same account and profile to sign in to the other link. Step two is to complete the application. So once you log in to your account, you will see this application intake screen for track one and for track two. All you have to do is open up the application components, answer the questions, fill it out, click save draft to save and return later so that you can just fill it out at your convenience. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. And please feel free to ask us questions as you go to our California Farm to Fork email and we're happy to help you as you're completing your application. The other thing you will see when you're in that application intake page is an opportunity to request letters of commitment and support. So once you open those parts up, you can enter the name and email address of your partners and send them a request. They will receive an email from the system and a link and they can upload their letter directly into the system. We definitely recommend to send your request earlier rather than later just to try to relieve some stress if those letters take a little longer to come in than you were expecting. And then step four is, of course, once all steps have been completed, click submit. And just keep in mind that once you submit, you'll no longer be able to edit your application. If you have any questions about WiseHive at all, or if any issues or challenges come up, please contact us at our office email. We're here to help. We really wanna make sure this system is not a barrier or a challenge to anyone as you're completing the application process. So please, please reach out to us if there's anything with the system that you need assistance with. Next, just a few things about the timeline of what's to come. So we will be posting all questions we receive and our answers to those questions online each week on Thursdays on the following dates. You can find this at the URL provided here, as well as on our own Farm to Fork webpage, and the URL for that is on the last page of the RFA. So we posted our first round of questions and answers today on our website, and we'll be doing this each Thursday for the coming five weeks until the application deadline. 
Remember this date, February 16th, that's when applications are due by 5 p.m. We're really excited to receive your applications if you decide to apply. We'll then review applications from February through March. We will announce awards sometime in March. And then grant term will start on June 1st, 2021 and end on March 31st, 2023. And your grant project can start and end anytime within that time frame. Okay, thank you so much for hanging in there and listening as we um, talked about this grant program. We're now excited to move into our Q&A. Um, I think some of you have been entering questions in the chat box already, and please feel free to continue, continue adding your questions there. Um, additionally, you can email the email provided here as more questions come up in the future, and we'll make sure to answer those and then post our answers publicly each Thursday. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.